Hello value viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. It's late September 2025. It's been a few days since the MiG-29 came out in DCS in high fidelity and I'm finally getting around to working out the bombs. It turns out they're quite complex. I've been through the user manual with a fine tooth comb and to be honest, it's not a great deal of help. I've ascertained there are four types of bombing with unguided bombs. CCIP, CCIP with pre-designation, CCRP and TOS bombing. Those are not the names in Russian, but I've used instead the equivalent NATO name to help make it easier to understand and a bit more uniform throughout the aircraft. CCIP, I've determined, is not the most accurate way of laying down bombs, but it's the quickest. So it's going to be used if you're at altitude, you see a target, you need to quickly roll in and drop a bomb before you lose visual on that target. That's going to be CCIP. CCIP with pre-designation is if you had a bit more time to work with you could pre-designate that target and get the bomb slightly more accurate although I find it a very difficult process to do. Then there's CCRP. CCRP in NATO jet is a very accurate and useful way of bombing. I found it in this Russian aircraft not very accurate and so instead I've decided in this aircraft to use it as a standoff method for high level saturation bombing. Finally, there's TOS, and it was really fun working out what the TOS method does in this aircraft, so I think I'll leave that as a surprise. So first we need to start in the mission editor. Which bombs do we have? We have stations 1, 2, 3 and 4. You have to have your bombs in pairs. You cannot mix and match on opposite sides. The bombs you can have on each of those four pylons are as follows. B-tabs. These are anti-runway or, should I say, high concrete penetration bombs. Fabs are general purpose, measured in kilograms, 250 and 500 kilograms. KMGU are cluster munition dispenser pods. They aren't droppable. Instead, the rear of the pod opens and the bomblets fall out. If you want to know which type of bomblet it has, obviously it says it here, high explosive frag, high explosive anti-tank and so on. OFAB, similar to the general purpose bomb and you can see its warhead size here. Then there's the IBKs. These are cluster munitions where the entire canister drops, similar to America's type of cluster bombs. You get the 250, that's the kilo size of the weapon, the amount of bomblets in there, and then finally the type of bomblet, high explosive, high explosive anti-tank. Now DCS has significantly changed the way the bombs work since I last did any tutorials on bombing, so we need to go through fusing. Without that, you're going to get really frustrated. So let's just choose some bombs for today. It really doesn't matter what we're going to use, so I'm just going to go um, Fab 250s on the inside. I'm going to go, just keep it simple, Fab 500s on the outside. Now in terms of fusing, uh, if we're going to drop these first, let's say. We have an arm delay. That is the amount of time after the bomb drops from the aircraft that the bomb will be fused. As the standard 11.5 seconds, that means if you drop the bomb and it takes less than 11.5 seconds to hit, it won't go off. And this has caught me out a million times so far. I'm still not used to doing this. So we want to change that to the minimum 4.5 seconds with this bomb. This is the um, subterranean delay. I wouldn't worry too much about that. I'm going to go apply to all applicable pylons it's just something you need to get in the habit of remembering to do especially when flying a plane like this 4.5 4.5 i should say as well um cluster munitions will have their types of delay which will be different they will have the arming delay after dropping from the aircraft wing and then the air burst delay as well um, we'll maybe have a look at that later so let's go back let's put our fab 500s on if you re-equip them you must remember to change the fuse at Again, welcome in first. Controls, obviously, you're going to drop the bombs with missile trigger. That will drop a pair of bombs as standard. When using the pre-designation technique, we're going to be pressing and holding lock on for the designation. If we want to manually force our laser to be on, which we probably will be, target acquisition symbol depressed. To change between bombs, or bomb types I should say, you have external stores which outboard and inboard to change between them. In terms of bombs, we can use three weapon control system modes. You can have TOS, which we'll use later, OPT, which we'll be using for everything except TOS, and you can have Boresight as well, but that's kind of a non-computed type, so we'll stick away from Boresight today. In each case, obviously, make sure that your master arm is turned on. So we'll start with CCIB being probably the simplest, so I'm going to turn WCS selector to OP. Let's have a look at our symbology. 
we can see the type of munition selected there currently in Cyrillic not available yet to us in English you can see the stations or pylon selected there if I were to go to outboard I would have the other type of bomb it's a different size but it's the same type of bomb hence the same Cyrillic otherwise normal flight instruments airspeed in knots for me altitude in feet for me our dive pitch which will be critical today and the calculated slant range between us and our highlighted target in nautical miles with our innermost bomb selected i think they were the 250s it doesn't really matter which because the wcs will work it all out for us we're going to unpause we're going to dive in on our target dive is extremely important in this aircraft it's incredibly sensitive to how you dive and again is that design is it just that's how it's working at the moment i don't really know so i'm going to pause there first of all in terms of dive the manual states you must dive between 10 and 40 degrees for a ccip deployment i found between 20 and 30 to be optimal speed i found between 400 and 500 to be optimal so I'm going to control my speed with my throttle obviously trim so it's nice and neutral to give you maximum control. I have a spade here and I quote a spade. The spade is this vertical line here at the bottom is going to be a reticle. It will come into view soon. I'm going to put the top of the spade on the target which is going to be the guy in the middle of the cross there. I'm going to check my dive. It's a little bit shallow but just about okay and speed is okay. It's just a general way I found of doing this to keep our aircraft straight in terms of lateral. So I'm going to keep that on the target there. Okay. As I get close up. The reticle is going to appear, it will do soon, I'm slightly sitting low in my seat, here it comes, I'm going to pause at that point. You can see why I've done what I've done so far, because it allows the reticle to slowly rise up that vertical line, and all I've got to do is keep that vertical line aligned with the target, and by the time the reticle gets there, it will be on cue. Look at the left, the bar, you can see we're now running down our slant range, so from us to that bit there of the CCIB continuously computed impact point is 2.1 miles but be careful it's not exactly 2.1 miles and that's because this is an estimation it doesn't know exactly until the laser range finder fires what the exact slant range is the laser range fire will fire well to be honest when it wants to which will be in about two seconds from now when it's fairly close to the ground once it does that it will stay on until the bomb has dropped once the range finder is firing it will sure up everything it will make everything slightly more accurate you can drop without the laser range finder but i suggest you don't finally you can manually turn the laser range finder on if you want it on earlier by pressing the acquisition to press button i saw earlier press it once it turns it on press it once it turns it off note there's a cool down time of 30 seconds so you can't turn it on turn it off turn it on turn it off so to get the bomb really on target i want to work until my reticle is perfectly on the target hold it as best i can wait until the laser range finder fires you'll know because the cyrillic a will show here at that point you're all good to drop obviously press the missile fire button i'm personally going to wait for the laser range of fire to fire itself because it's just one more thing to think about that i don't want at the moment okay so i'm gonna unpause sorry if i go a bit jiggly when i unpause there it is it's firing and pop bomb drop and just pause my aircraft there drop the bombs the fuses i already sorted out and that should be uh, slightly shy okay about 40 feet out and that's probably because i was just doing slightly something slightly wrong in fact if anything i would say i was ever so slightly shy on the pitch if i was more like 25 i guarantee that would have been bang on target at this point it's automatically selected my next stations and i can go around and do the bombing but for ease of tutorial let's just start again this time we're going to do the pre-designated ccip what this does is allow me to shore up the accuracy of the ccip drop a bit better because we have to remember aircraft are not magic they don't amazingly know where that pipa is on the ground it has to make estimates and the more information we give it especially a 1980s aircraft the more accurate it can be go master arm is on go to opt there you just about see that i'm going to dive in again again i suggest plenty of altitude because you need quite a lot of time especially when doing an operation like this one we're going to do so 20,000 feet is fine get the aircraft settled about 400 500 knots just sorting the trim out to make it nice and natural and pause so what we're going to be doing this time viewers is a completely different procedure first we're going to be initiating a calibration of the sensors by telling the system roughly where we're going to be bombing to do that we put the spade i'll just move my head up a bit there or the reticle part of it there 
on or as near to the target as we can. Force it up there. We're then going to press and hold the lock on button and keep the lock on button held. At that point, the spade and the reticle will be replaced by an aiming mark similar to a small version of the reticle. We have to then move that aiming mark onto the target and hold it as best we can on the target. We cannot do anything further until the laser turns on, which will be shown by the Cyrillic A. We either wait for the system to do it manually or we force it on ourselves with acquisition depress. I suggest you just wait because it's just one more thing you have to worry about. Once the laser rangefinder is firing, we release finally the lock on button that has calibrated the system for the shot. Finally, the aiming mark will be removed and replaced again by the reticle here. We then have a few seconds to make final adjustments onto the target. Move the reticle onto the target like CCIP, press the missile fire and the bombs will drop. But once you've let go of the lock on button, you have between 1.5 seconds to 4 seconds to get this onto the target and and do the bomb drop. If you take, strangely, less than 1.5 seconds, you will have inaccuracy. If you take more than four seconds, you will also have inaccuracy. It's strange idiosyncrasy, and I assume it's like that because of limitations of 1980 Soviet tech. So, I'm gonna do my best here. I'm gonna go trim, speed looks good. I'm gonna move my thing on my thing, my reticle on my target, keep it as vertically center as possible, and I'm going to lock on to be replaced by our aiming mark there to keep that as best I can on the target wait for the laser designator don't let it slip off too much at that point I've got 1.54 seconds to drop the bomb there I caused myself there I mean I was slightly off but that's pretty bang on the money what we're going where I aimed at So although it's a more accurate way of bombing, I found it much more difficult to use. So you've got to get that balance. I, I guess it's something you just have to work harder to get that those sequence of presses absolutely perfect. So CCRP, I'm going to go to OPT and I've got my master arm on. Pause there. This is continuously computed release point. It is not a very accurate way of bombing in the MiG at the moment. And so the best use case we found for it is standoff bombing keeping ourselves safe from the target. The two CCO IP modes we've looked at so far require you to go in a dive and get close to the target. This we can use as standoff. What we're gonna do is get ourselves roughly wings level with the target, and then we're gonna force ourselves or force the system into CCRP mode. I'm just gonna pause it there. What I'm gonna do is take the reticle here and force it directly and prematurely onto the target here while it's still at the base of the HUD. Press and hold missile fire and that will force the system into CCRP. Remember on CCIP we waited until the reticle started climbing the screen. That's the difference. So let's get that done and pause. This time I'm going to force the laser on because I'm going to do everything from a higher altitude. So I've pressed acquisition depress and you can see the Cyrillic A is here so the laser is now on. I'm not expecting it to be an accurate drop still because we're doing it from high altitude essentially by eye. Okay so let's work the uh, reticle here. I'm going to put it on the thing there. I'm going to press and hold and I'm going to pause. Um, what's happening now is we've gone through to CCRP mode. We now have an azimuth aiming circle at the top there. My job as the pilot is to keep that centered on that horizontal line. If I drift left, it will go right and I'll have to chase it right until it's centered again. In terms of elevation, it doesn't really matter. I can continue to dive or I can level out or I can even go in a slight climb, but I must continue pressing missile fire. Finally, the slant range meter has been changed to a timer, a countdown, in seconds. I'm quite close to the drop point because it took me a while to aim, so I've only got one more second to go. Once it gets to zero, it's going to make its final calculations, and then the bombs will drop at the CCRP, the release point. So I'm going to unpause, I'm going to slightly level out, I'm going to try and keep myself the centres on that mark as best I can. There we go, and the bombs have dropped. Now, because I took quite a long time to aim that, I only had a second or so of uh, manoeuvring time, but if I did it from further away, from 40,000 feet, I would have had, well, well over five seconds, I imagine. Accuracy is gonna be quite low, as we see there at the moment, because we're designating from so far away. And to be honest, I wouldn't even be surprised if the laser rangefinder is not accurate, or maybe it doesn't even function at this altitude. I haven't got that information yet. 
So the fourth and final method, toss. This is really exciting to do, viewers. So toss in a NATO plane tends to mean flying along at low level, pulling up, tossing the bomb several miles away from the target. It lands on or near the target, and your plane never has to go anywhere near the target. This is very different. I've had to find out the hard way. I should say at this point, the manual is very incomplete at the time of making this video. It's very early access. I will have to come back and redo this video once everything's finalized. But this is what we've got so far. The idea of a Russian toss is very different. So I'm gonna to go toss here, master arm on, and that's it. And pause. This is gonna be a low level ingress. I'm just using the same mission, so. All right, in we go, 500 knots. We're gonna need some kinematics because we're gonna do some, uh, some interesting maneuvers. Okay, 500 knots, power's on, drive the reticle up to the target, press and hold the missile uh, trigger. There we'll do, press and hold. We've now got a countdown timer like we did in CCRP. Our job now is to steer in terms of other azimuth while keeping ourselves level in terms of altitude. So the tail of our, our symbol, aircraft symbol there is in line with the reticle, which it is. Once it gets down to zero, the aiming reticle will move to the top of the screen and be a different type of guide. And it's probably just easier if I show it as we go. So I'm still pressing and holding missile fire, keeping it as level as I can pause the next stage happens it now moves up it's now a climb guide we have to move so the tail of our aircraft which is that little vertical line there the top of it matches the dot in that reticle that tells us how to climb watch this you ain't never seen nothing like this so that there is my vector is telling me how many g's to pull which happens to be i believe four g's keep it there keep it there ignore it when it goes left and right it's just doing a switch over you can see the count, second countdown on the left there. The bombs are gone. I'm just going to pause it there. What have I actually done there? I've done what Americans call labs. I think they call it labs. Sorry if I've got that wrong. Flown over the target at a couple of hundred feet, designated it as I've gone. I've then rolled back over at high speed. And when I've finished my kind of half loop, my Im Immelman, if you will, the bombs drop at a pre-designated point and come back down on the target. Why on earth would anyone want to drop a bomb like that? Well, it's just a different way of doing it. It's predominantly made in the early part of the Cold War as a way of dropping tactical nuclear bombs, because obviously it's never going to be accurate. But what it does do is allow my aircraft to buy time to get out of the nuclear blast. So that's great. And to be honest, that's actually pretty accurate. That's pretty more accurate than my CCRP. Boom. So imagine a kiloton yield going off now. My plane's had, what, five miles to escape on the deck. That's as we've got them working at the moment. I suggest following my instructions as closely as you can. The further you deviate, the I found the less accurate you've got. And I spent a lot of time today trying around, around with the different options. Um, using a KGMU dispenser pod, the reticle will represent where your first bomblet will drop, you press and hold missile fire until as many bomblets have dropped that you want. If you want to drain the whole canister, then you can do that. Otherwise, there's nothing else I can think of. I hope that was useful and bye bye.